field. So how would you fundamentally, because I, I suspect you want to make fundamental change, how would you fundamentally change state government, how it's operated? Well, I have a seriousness of purpose on this, Terry. There's three things that I would do uh, once I win the governorship. And I believe that I am the only electable Republican versus the Democrat in November because everybody that's declared or even thinking about declaring on my side of the aisle, they have one thing in common as they walk through your door. They have political baggage, and I don't. So I think I can beat the Democrat. I think I can become governor, and then I will do three things immediately. The first thing that I will do is I'll take the oath of office on the very first day I can at one minute after midnight, and I will come off that uh, uh, platform after the oath of office, and I will sign an executive order putting as much of the state information, financial information online. The campaign motto of my, my campaign is every dime online in real time. Because if we can see the problems, we can fix those problems. Now the next thing I'll do is very important. I will call the legislature into session immediately on ethics reform and a tough ethics policy. And I'm leading on this personally on my website where I'm posting my federal and state income tax returns. I'm disclosing my sources of income. I would require that of every single elected official here in Illinois. Bobby Jindal did it in Louisiana. Louisiana has a similar reputation to Illinois on corruption. The third thing I would do, on the open books, every dime online in real time, we would descend teams of forensic accountants to go from top to bottom on this Illinois state budget and see where every dime and every bit of waste is being uh, misspent. Now, in the city of New Orleans, they did this, and they found 140 off-the-books agencies that had never been discovered in an audit before. Just think of what's here in Springfield. When we look at budgets, uh, whether it's the federal budget or the state budget or even the city budgets, what you'll see is that there's a lot of money that is are in the budgets that is not discretionary. Uh, and at the state level, one of the things, and at city levels, uh, pensions are continuing to grow. There are commitments, contracts that have been made by previous administrations uh, and really uh, are, are off, out of control as far as what any governor can do. Uh, governor Quinn has stepped up to the plate and suggested that He's going to make some uh, changes as far as the new hires to the state. Uh, what do you think about the, the, that, that issue as far as being able to get a control of a budget when you have things like the pensions growing, which are not discretionary? I think a lot of, uh, I should say, a lot of citizens believe that uh, budgets start at zero every year and are cobbled together in totality during the legislative session when really so much of those dollars are already spoken for. The state of Illinois has made promises and we need to fully fund those promises. We have the dollars to do it. For instance, our population over the last 10 years has not really been growing. We've grown since 1998 as a state in terms of population by 4%, yet our state budget has exploded by 48%. So the dollars are there to fully fund the promises of the state. If you're part of the politically franchised here in Illinois, if you're a lobbyist, if you're connected, if you're an insider, you get paid first in this state budget. And I've read this budget, and my staff's read it, read it twice. If you're a retiree on the state pension system, if you've opened up your house to foster care children and receive state aid, if you're a retirement home here in Illinois that receives state aid, if you're a doctor that serves Medicaid and Medicare patients, these people are paid last, if at all. And that's the culture of corruption, and that's the end result of waste, fraud, corruption, and abuse in public spending, and I will end that. Yeah, but how, how on the other hand, would you balance budgets when you, when, when you increasingly have, again, these pension? There, there are certain areas as far as the budgets. You have the pension, you have health care, and you have education. Right. Uh, we have had some other people uh, who are conservatives and said, well, we can cut our way out. And maybe that's the case. I, I, I'm not here to argue with people about it, but I'm just saying, how would you do that unless you're going to be cutting education, health benefits, or pensions? Again, I'm going to fully fund people in need, uh, and we have the dollars And I to presume do you're it. not going to raise taxes. Correct. Okay. This, this is how I'll go about doing it. Every dime online in real time protects the taxpayer, and this is why. 
we're not going to ever have uh, spending cuts if we don't see where every single dollar of state spending is at. Until we see it, we can't fix it. And right now, I have a challenge for Governor Quinn. He wants to raise our state income tax, but he's not showing us where the $55 billion of state spending is currently being done. Before Governor Quinn raises the taxes on the hardworking people in a tough economy, when dollars are stretched very thin at home, he needs to have the simple respect for the hardworking taxpayer of showing us where every dime is being spent. So that's the first thing. Then the second... Uh, well, isn't, isn't, you said you read the budget. Isn't, mm -hmm. the, isn't the budget showing you where the dollars are being spent? Oh, my gosh. The state budget, it's 467 pages. Where do we start? It's one of the most opaque documents that exists. I want to give you uh, two simple statistics. William Holland, the Auditor General of the state of Illinois, issued a report on directive of the General Assembly. They said, tell us how many state programs there are. He concluded on his study that he wasn't even able to quantify the number of state programs amongst the 83 state agencies. From reading the budget, we've gleaned another figure, which is very interesting. In the budget, it says that the state spends money out of slightly more than 600 checkbooks or fund accounts. If you go on to Danny Hines' website, the comptroller, he'll tell you that the state spends money out of slightly less than 700 checkbooks. If we don't even know the number of state programs, if we don't even know the number of state checkbooks, it's part and parcel of the financial crisis and the mess that we're in now. Uh, let's move on, on on the pensions, and I don't want to spend the whole time on that, but uh, what do you think about the, you know, currently we have a defined benefit program. You come to work for the state, when you retire, we're going to give you X number of dollars a month. The alternative idea, uh, would be to have a defined contribution, which is how many private businesses do it. You work for us and we'll contribute to your retirement fund, maybe in a 401k. Uh, should we have changes, those changes to the pension, or are there some other changes that you would envision that would help uh, the state afford those pensions? Well, I'm amenable to looking at, uh, at all of those ideas. I think they're good ideas. I think all those ideas need to be on the table and they need to, need to be discussed. And we need to have public scrutiny on that process. Uh, obviously, the process of crafting legislation here in Springfield is a, is a very uh, behind-the-scenes process. It's oftentimes cloaked in privacy. So we need a full public debate on these things. But to, to answer your question, there is a, a very simple thing that we could do on, on pensions. If we tied the pension, the, the pension programs and the funding of those pension programs to each individual agency's budget and made it accountable to that agency and their local budget within the broad state budget, we would start to move toward uh, greater responsibility and greater accountability in the funding of these pensions. And obviously, it's the worst problem in the country for Illinois, as our pensions are the worst funded in the country, and we have about $78 billion worth of unfunded pensions. Does that mean that someone who is working in the Department of Agriculture might have a different pension benefit than someone, say, working for the state police? Well, the, the funding of that pension would be tied to the budget of the uh, Department of Agriculture. So when, 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 uh, if it was underfunded, there would be people to be, out, be able to hold to account uh, on the underfunding of that pension. Right now, obviously, the General Assembly walks into these pensions and, and raids them for current expenses. So uh, if we eliminated that possibility and brought these pensions local into the separate agencies and made those agencies to account for the funding of that out of their budgets, um, that's an idea that, uh, that I would also